Hello and welcome to UniversityofShed.net. This lecture is taken from University of Shed's philosophy series and is on the categorical imperative. Fiat justitia periat mundus. Let justice be done, though the world perish. This quotation, taken from Kant's 1795 Perpetual Peace, neatly sums up his philosophical position, namely that people have moral duties which they must necessarily follow. Such duty is revealed to us through reason and is an unconditional obligation which must be realised regardless of an individual's own will or desire. This position, reflecting Kant's deontological philosophy, which focuses on the morality of actions rather than their consequences, contrasts with the prevailing utilitarian philosophy of the late 18th century, which focuses on the morality and desirability of ends rather than means. It is categorical in the sense that it applies universally and without conditions, and it is an imperative in that it is a command which has to be followed without question. Kant himself defined the categorical imperative as a process by which you should act only according to that maxim whereby you can at the same time will that it should become a universal law. For example, you personally must follow the categorical imperative thou shalt not kill if you believe that everybody should follow this imperative. Since it is a duty, it is necessary to follow the categorical imperative even when there seems to be no harm in not doing so. For example, if you find yourself in a car at a red stoplight early in the morning when there are no other cars on the road, should you drive through, knowing that there is no chance you will cause an accident to anyone? If you decide to do so, if you will this action, you are accepting the universality of the action, namely that anyone can go through any red light at any time they choose regardless of the specific situation. It is this universality which differentiates the categorical imperative from the golden rule, with which it is often confused. Whereas the golden rule focuses on the self, the individual, i.e. you should treat others as you would want to be treated yourself, the categorical imperative is universal. Since the categorical imperative follows the moral law, conditionality can never be attached to the categorical imperative. This said, Kant was a realist. He does not think people should do what is impossible for them. Moral statements are prescriptive, meaning that I ought to do something is the same as I can do something. The categorical imperative thus contrasts with a hypothetical imperative, which applies only conditionally. Whereas the categorical imperative would say, do X, a hypothetical imperative would say, do X in order to achieve Y. If we actually analyse the constituent parts of a hypothetical imperative, we need to ascertain, firstly, whether Y is in fact a moral objective, secondly, whether doing X is moral as well, and thirdly, whether doing X will actually lead to Y in any case. One of the strongest challenges to the categorical imperative came from the French philosopher Benjamin Constant, who argued that since telling the truth must be universal, then it follows that one must, if asked, tell a known murderer the whereabouts of his intended victim. Kant agreed with this position, but denied that it weakened his premise, since moral actions do not derive their value from their expected consequences. Kant argues that humans occupy a special place in creation because of their reason. As such, this is a serious responsibility which should not be taken lightly. Although the categorical imperative is often in battle with our natural wants and desires, immor immorality stems from a violation of the categorical imperative, and therefore it must be followed at all times. Morality comes from doing what is right, whatever the consequences may be.